especially because my own father told me about this. My my grandfather used to go on these long trips, so at least sometimes walking, uh, trekking 20, 25 days to find justice from the king or the queen, which they called. Now it's called the Supreme Justice. Then it was the. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that it also shows you how accessible the royal families were to the commoners, no matter how rich or poor you are. If you're in search of justice, they were as accessible as as anybody can imagine. And why I, I was really in love with this story is because we have heard about ourselves from from the other side. We have between us a scholar who is trying to study how manuscripts and knowledge has been stolen and adulterated and exported back to us and it has contributed to us having a very low self-esteem. But now you're telling our own story from our own viewpoint. And there is this African uh, proverb, until the lion learns to write his own story, the story of the, the, the hunt will always glorify the, uh, the hunter. And now we are the lion, and we are telling our own story, glorifying ourselves. And it, that's why I really, really mm-hmm. was mesmerized by the narration and the, the cinematographic skill as well. I, I would like to talk about the cinematography, though, because you spent h- how much money? Uh, I know when I was in Ethiopia, romantic comedy and comedy are the ones that make the most money. Mm-hmm. Yours was, it was a disruption mm-hmm. from that, and you are doing a historical drama. Mm-hmm. Why a historical drama as a genre, and why was this story particularly set during Zodiac's time? Kuranya existed during Haile Selassie's time, Yasu's time, Menelik's time, Johannes's time. Why Zodiac? Why does? Why, why did she have to be a queen instead of a king? Yeah, this is a very interesting question. For me, the, the entire process of making this, this film was a revolution, rebellion in me, in terms of all facets of the production process. Uh, why this movie, uh, the established uh, general in the country, was romantic comedy, as you said. But that doesn't make sense to me. Why? So I have to make something that, that makes sense to me. And this makes sense to me. So even if the, you know, the train was a different kind of general, I have to do it. That's one rebellion inside me. And, uh, and then an old story. An old story. Nobody knows about this barefooted you know, this fur, uh, you know, uh, closed, simple, shabby person, the cane and everything. Nobody want about that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Wallach, <coughs> that's unprogressive or some ancient and some backward story. Why? I, I have to rebellion and I have to find something meaningful from that and I have to make a fresh presentation to that and I have to prove it. That's also another rebellion, you know. And also, about the Ethiopian kings, they are all fighting for this power, but this queen was not fighting for power. She, according to the research, she didn't know that she was the queen until four days after she was, you know, crowned. All these powerful people crowned her, but she didn't know for days. After four days, people told her, heralded her, that she was a queen. She, she doesn't, she doesn't have any interest in power. But now from that standpoint from that vintage she can give a very meaningful justice for people <coughs> unwillingly chained in some you know life uh, entangling and that was that was uh, what she was doing you know because she was in chain to the throne and she was not happy about it this guy was chained with some powerful man and without his will you know so she's a very good judge from that standpoint <coughs> And it has its own philosophy, uh, and also in terms of expense, you know, uh, once I believe in that, and once there is a strong, urgent, rebellion uh, feeling inside me, I decided I have to pay any sacrifice down the way, uh, unless and otherwise somebody do it, nobody just can make this movie, so. But that, is, uh, that can only speak for your commitment, but you're a sociologist mm-hmm. by training. Yeah. <laughs> He's a sociologist. So how difficult was it making this movie? I was talking to Marco earlier. Could this movie have been made 10 years ago, 15 years ago, with the kinds of equipment you had, with the kinds of movie piracy and the counterfeited copies? Like, uh, I, I have met several people, and I, and I wrote uh, a small book about uh, movie piracy and how mm-hmm. movie makers, there were about 300 people who made movies. Only three of them survived. Most of them, they were left homeless. They sold their cars and they they started using public transport. 
it's a huge risk jumping into this with, from what I heard, 4.5 million mm -hmm. Ethiopian brim. You know? So how was the technical difficulty finding the location, working with people who never seen a movie, live alone participating in its production? So, and you worked with people who, who <coughs> this is your first time in, in, in the films. films. So instead of, yeah, instead of getting all those superstars, mm -hmm. you worked with debutants like yourself. Yeah. So how, how difficult was it? Yeah, yeah just uh, to begin with the last question of yours, uh, uh, just uh, actor like him is a new actor, and also <coughs> engaging all new actors was also another rebellion, because the material, the script doesn't need those superstars in the city. Even some superstars come for audition, but it, it didn't work out for them, you know. So I have to decide, I have to decide and I have to take a risk. By the way, uh, we uh, uh, just uh, auditioned like 580 people, and from those people, we just picked only 40 main stars. And one of them was him, and he was auditioned five times. And five <laughs>
let's go back to. I mean, I, I loved how impeccable the details were. And he spoke about this father, the religious father that came from Marcel. Mm -hmm. But the first thing I noticed when I watched this movie was how the Amharic texts were so meticulously done to emulate the ones that we see in the actual manuscripts that are written on God's skin. Mm -hmm. how, 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 why was that so important? Yeah, I think uh, uh, to me it is a commitment for art. Art is a, a kind of sacred thing, so one, if just decided to write a script, that should be a serious engagement for me. So it, it starts from there. Uh, and for me, shortcut is to read a lot. I read a lot, a lot, all ancient books, you know, manuscripts and everything. I, like him, I born in the city. Even my father and my mother grew in the city. I didn't have that background, but my father was a long time in the background, in the countryside. I heard so many stories about his life, his past life. And they, their life was uh, like the widest life that I wish uh, I could live. But now, in the city, you know, I don't have that experience. So the only shortcut to have that was to read and a lot. And the director, to me, should read a lot and should analyze a lot and uh, just try to um, come up with that authenticity in terms of content. The script should act, the, the literature, the dialogue should act by itself. And the costume, the props should act not only the actors and the actors' society. The props and everything, the costume and everything should act, and the location should act, and that should be scavenged meticulously with a paramount uh, commitment, and that somebody, uh, like the director of scriptwriter, should do that, and that's, that's why, I, to me, it's a commitment. The other thing that really went into the movie that is part of the Ethiopian literary culture is that this art of suggestion and implication instead of telling. Mark so the they... Oh, uh, th th the other thing that's such a huge uh, cultural... Uh, it's such a huge culture that, that went into the movie making is this art of suggestion and implication instead of like calling a thing by its name, they suggest Ethiopians, regardless of which language you speak, if it's Tigrinya, Marinya, or Romo, like all of them, they have this, like they, they slightly suggest it and they make you work to understand it. And in this movie, I see that a lot. There are so many things that are suggested, implied, but we are not told. We see, uh, we see Legiasus' picture being taken out of the line of the kings. We see the crown coming over her head and her like trying to avoid it. We see the chair being shot right behind the, the queen. All of those were just implications. Instead of telling us the sky is blue, you showed us. So that that, that was something that really um, fascinated me. Is there is there should we take questions from the crown by the way instead of us having? Um, Maybe before the question, one thing that I'm very much. Uh, interested on this movie, on my own movie, is that the way it was narrated. Mm. Uh, so it is a contribution, one contribution, one small contribution for the entire movie, you know, uh, collection to me. Uh, so the screenwriter not only write a story, but a base screenwriter presents also narrative style. Narrative structure. The assignment is completed not when he has come up with a very fascinating story. The assignment will be completed when he come up in way of narrating that story. That's what, that's what I'm very much interested about this one. So I just uh, present this story from the clay for uh, foreigners, you, you, you just read, read a lot about the word clay. Clay uh, is a kind of uh, strong poetic uh, craft with a devil meaning. Devil and or something. Yeah, it's a pun. Yes, devil meaning. It was spontaneous, it's not recite. Since 
the English doesn't allow us. We say, let me recite it, but clay is not recited. It is spontaneous. When the, the instructor tells uh, a story, <coughs> that student should stand there. It is spontaneously, he has to come up with a very strong point, poem, with a double meaning, and it is a very rhythm, rhythmical kind of. And this is a very com uh, complex philosophy in that. Uh, and, you know, so I start to think, how can a film narrator or a film enthusiast like me can present his narrative, his story, in a clay form with double meaning? There is a, a flat message on top, and, but there is a hidden message. Some can pick up the hidden, the embedded meaning, and others can pick the literal meaning. You know, so that's how I try to present. So, uh, in the city in Addis Ababa and in Ethiopia, many people come and talk to me. I see it twice, I see it three times, but, uh, but I, I can't imagine because for, for the four in the entire four years, I was spending my time so that people go again and see it. Because it is poetic like Kane. Yeah. If you heard a Kane, some like him told you a Kane, then you go on and think about it. It is too minor Kane, but you think about it. Oh, he wants to say that. No, 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 no. Oh, maybe he's <laughs> like to say that. It, it just nudges you, it keeps with you. And sometimes, film, if it was crafted very well, it can have that effect to you. Taking about it for a long time and go back again to watch it and to find out your way, your own way of in chain with singers. You might be in chain with good things, you might be in chain with bad things. Try to figure out your own message from that. That's something I always fascinated about this. Everything